Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all of the Congressional District 1 English teachers in the junior high school department. Hello, hello to everyone. This is, we are finally in our last session, session six for the teaching grammar communicatively in the Philippines. So how are you? I hope that you're still alive and you're still energetic for this last, last session that we are to have, which is on teaching grammar communicatively, going a bit further, communicative tasks. So before we start up with everything for our session six, I know that you're excited for this, both because you want to learn more or maybe because you want to end it all up and finish everything, okay. But then let's first have our prayer before we start up. Let us all put ourselves in the holy presence of God as we all say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this wonderful afternoon that you have given to us for us to be together again. May you be able to pour us again some more knowledge, some more insights and some more understanding as we participate in this session six, our last session for the teaching grammar communicatively in the Philippines. May you grant also enlightenment to the speakers, to all of us, to the participants, so that may we be able to comprehend everything for your greater honor and glory. Once again, O oh Lord, we still ask you to protect us and guide us and grant us the mercy and forgiveness and protection from the pandemic that we are experiencing right now. All of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow, thank you very much, everyone, for praying with me. We will really pray for that one. Later on, after session six, we'll be having, we'll be having our closing program. So stay tuned for that as well. But for now, we would like to remind everyone that we are that we are already 63 participants here, but I hope that the others also are looking and checking at their Facebook, at the Facebook Live which we are also having there. And later on, and I hope also that you had done your attendance. Please do clock in for your attendance this afternoon. And also clock out this afternoon after everything that we are having now. That is one, as I've said already, as we have already been reminding you, that is one of the, one of the um, requirements that we are going to check before we give you your certificates of participation. So Sir Ronilo Palincod is now putting in the link for the time in of session six, day three, session six, that is the afternoon in the chat box. So please do check the chat box. We have it right there, okay? So thank you very much, Sir Ronilo, for posting that one in the chat box. So. Before we start up with everything, let's first stretch ourselves for a bit while with a short energizer. I know that this has been repeated already as yesterday, but I hope that this will still be applicable to you and you'll still be stretched with this one. Okay, wait for a bit while. Thank you very much for waiting. Once again, please do make sure that you have already that you have already given yourselves a time to, to do the attendance for this afternoon, okay? Okay, let's wait for a bit while as I am trying to do the screen sharing, okay? So, and I hope that you had already done your output let us not procrastinate in our output making. But I know that you will be doing that very fast because you are really very brilliant teacher. So I really believe in that and that it's very, it's an easy job for you to do the activity. Okay, wait for a bit while. Okay. 
Please wait for a bit while. Okay. So again, I know that you have already done your output. Have you done your lesson plans already? That was a task that is asked of you from this morning's lesson, which I know that you have been really been able to comprehend because it was Dr. Paul, Peter Paul Kubai, who shared it to all of you. And it was really clearly presented. And now let's have a short energizer. Okay, please wait for a bit well. Thank you very much for waiting. Okay, so there. your chair and let's get started with some arm circles so nice and big forward and backward we are definitely not trying to move too fast your heart rate's going to come up during this warm-up but our bigger issue much more than your heart rate is mobility we're making sure your muscles are warm and we're moving our joints all the way through their full range of motion so that you are ready for whatever kind of workout you've got on tap today when it beeps and it will pretty quickly here this isn't a long warm-up we're going to do arm crossers as well. Taking nice deep breaths, really thinking about how your shoulders feel. Go ahead and relax them while we're warming them up. Trying to work out some of those kinks, those knots, work out some of the tension in your shoulders. Awesome. And arm crossers. Still working that shoulder joint, but in a different plane of motion now. Keeping your hands at just about shoulder height, moving open and close. Crossing those arms and crossing them again the other way, changing which hand is on top. Really thinking about pulling from your back to squeeze those arms open and squeezing from your chest to open up the back while we're pulling our arms closed. Working those front and back muscles, not just the top and bottom. Really feeling like our upper body is nice and warm now. When it beeps, we're gonna move on to lower body. Gonna do some high knees. Now for mobility work, I like to use my hands and really help my knee to my chest. Again, we're not worrying too much about a high heart rate. We're not worrying too much about toning or getting results. All we're doing is trying to work our hips, our knees, and even our ankles as we put our foot back down through a range of motion. This is the forward and back motion, just bringing the knee to the hip. Our next exercise is going to be knee openers, which is going to move the hips through a different range of motion. Thinking about, I know that this is a fitness trainer thing to say, but thinking about your planes of motion and really preparing yourself to move through all of them dynamically is the best way to warm up. It's not just about your heart rate, though that is part of the equation. A lot of it, here we go with knee openers, so open and close open and close much harder to open on one side than the other for me still kind of using my hands to help guide here but really trying to use my abs a little bit too that's actually going to be our next exercise is to warm up those abs but thinking about keeping your hip bones pointed forward so you're really working your inner and outer thighs rather than swiveling on the chair i know you could get a lot further open if you were to swivel your butt but we're trying to stay seated while just working those inner and outer thighs, working the hip joint through the side plane of motion. When it beeps again, it'll be our last exercise, a little something I call welcome to my home. So hands straight out in front of you. We're gonna twist your torso a little bit one way and then back to center and then twist your torso the other way, opening up that arm. Welcome to my home, as though you are greeting somebody at your front door. Welcome to my home. Awesome job. Welcome to my fitness home, killer bees. I'm so glad you're here today. So glad we're working out together or at least warming up together. <laughs> Depends on what other kind of workout you might have ahead of you. But I'm glad you're here with me warming up and feeling good. Definitely got that heart rate up a little bit. Definitely got our muscles warmed, got a smile on our face, got ready for the day. Super, super proud of you, and that was it. Be sure to click that subscribe button and have a great workout. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for participating, our dear participants, for this afternoon session. Okay, 
So that's it. I hope that you have stretched a bit because with the soundness of your mind comes the soundness of your, the soundness of your body also comes the soundness of your mind. And I know that we can also do this one with our students as we have our online classes. But then if we can afford with our online classes because of the internet connection that is very poor with our learners, still we can, still we can have that during our face-to-face our -face classes. I hope that it may come as soon as possible. But then for now, let us let me introduce to you to our speaker of our last session. Our last session is entitled Teaching Grammar Communicatively, going a bit further on communicative tasks. Our speaker for this session is a senior high school master teacher one of San Agustin National High School of Sagbayan District, Bohol. She has already taught for 23 long years. She graduated Master of Arts in Education in Holy Name University and also Doctor of Philosophy and Educational Management still in Holy Name University. She is currently the LAC coordinator of their school, the language department chair, the school curriculum chair, and the school research and development chair. You can throw him a lot of questions in research given the chance actually, and she will be answering it with all her prowess. She has also been, uh, at, she also attended a national training on teaching grammar communicatively in the Philippines last March 24 to May 5, which now she is very, very much willing to share it to all of you. Let's all welcome with a big round of applause once again the senior high school master teacher one of Sagbayan of San Agustin National High School Sagbayan District. Let's give our warm welcome to Dr. Peregrita Jade Tahan. Good afternoon. So much. Thank you, Dr. Pesilo. Yes, for that very generous, no, you really are my classmate. Yes, my classmate, <laughs> my friend. Yes, my friend. Take okay. it on. Okay. Thank you. So before I will start, I would like to salute, make a salute to the of the Division of the Hall, Dr. Benito of our Division Superintendent. The brilliant mind behind this training headed our apps in English, Sir Pablito Villalon. The training team, of course, Sir Ronello, Lincoln, and Mama Rilu. My co-facilitators in this webinar, Dr. Gemma, Dr. Salu, Dr. Paul, Dr. Felix, and Sir Marvin. Uh, the proficient English teachers of the Congressional District 1. A blessed Friday afternoon to all of you. Now, it is my honor to be counted and be a part of this professional growth. But despite our, the implications of schedules we have, and I know some of you are distributing modules in your respective classes, Despite of all the tasks we have work on, we continue and choose to grow professionally. So this is one of the best things our teachers of the Division of Bohol is part of. So may all the things that we ask from this training bless us to grow more in our profession. So let's get started. May I ask you if I am um, able to leave you? Yes, my friend. Thank uh, you so much. Okay, so this is going a bit further. We have learned much from the previous discussions in sessions one to five. Now this time, let's take a little further on communicative tasks with its teacher and how we can apply this in our respective classes. This is one of the approaches that our learners understand better, develops the competence in the language, and a good way to learn how to use the language 
pregnancy in a situation that is likely to take place. So I am asked to share this to you, going to be other predictive tests. And before I before get through, may I request everyone to stay tuned. You may do some other things as you are releasing your modules in your respective classes. Stay tuned and get connected. Now, I would like you to type in the chat box for your responses, your questions, your insights based on the learning of the day. So let's get the ball rolling. Our session objective, our objective is to deepen understanding on communicative tasks based on grammar or language. And this session enables you to identify the difference between an activity and a task, enumerate tasks in identifying language, identify the characteristics of communicative tasks and types of tasks, and finally list down the steps to create and deliver tasks and Say watch a demo on delivery. So are you ready? Let me see if you are ready. You can type in the chat box R if you are ready. Okay, let me see if everyone is ready. You type R in the chat box if you are ready. There you go, Mom Ignacia, Mom. Uh, somebody, Imam Mizilda. Yes, we have Mom Ivy is ready. And I'm sure everyone is ready. Carla is also is ready. So let's proceed. Okay. Let's review. Able to link our understanding with the previous sessions. Okay. Session one what does teaching grammar communicatively involve? From the chat box, we answer what does teaching grammar communicatively involve? This is discussed by Doc Flix in session one. What do you think does teaching grammar connectively involve? Okay, anyone from the participants that's involved? Okay, so this involved. What do you think? Okay. This involves scaffolding. So scaffolding challenges learners through deep learning and discovery. It engages learners in a meaningful and a dynamic discussion. Now for session two is mediating grammar instruction and activities. What are the three A's of mediating grammar instruction and activities as discussed by our speaker? Let me see from the chat box. Anyone can still remember? Yes, the three A's. What are those three A's? Correct, Mom, Phoebe, Grace. Thank you for your answer. We have exposed, plain, and engage. Now, teachers have to create direct activities, expose them. You know, one of the most important tasks of the teacher is to give learners enough exposure to examples of language in different contexts. Now, let them explain, okay. let them engage, and this enables students to develop their communicative skills. So expose, explain, and engage. How about in the next session? Session three. Another two A's of integrating grammar in skill based lesson. What are the two A's as emphasized for our speaker? Okay, for session three, we have empower. We also have explore. Teachers can explore activities and should be empowered to make choices on the appropriate material or a certain strategy to use in a skill-based lesson. Grammar is taught at the point of need and comes at any part of the lesson. Okay, let's proceed with session four, error correction and feedback. What should us teachers do to correct errors and give feedback? Of course, we have to make a plan when and how. 
So teachers have to negotiate a plan for error correction with students. Please remember that it is important to give corrective feedback to promote positive learning environment. Okay, let's proceed with session five. This is discussed to you by Dr. Paul this morning. Okay, session five is lesson planning. So lesson planning deals on planning. Now we have varied options for context. When planning a communicative lesson, teacher should select grammar focus. Now choose activities, write a plan, teach the lesson, reflect on the success of the lesson, or revise if there are some adjustments. Okay, so let's proceed with our main point of view. Your task of the day is to choose a number. You may choose odd or even number. Now, do not admit you can choose digits, four digits you like to. You can choose even or odd. May I know from the participants what digit you choose? Let me see and check. Okay. We have, how about, yes, we have 18. What else? Out the eight, Mom Jude. Well, what else? They mostly are even numbers. How about odd numbers? Okay, we have 32. Yes, Mom Nimisha, 13. Another one, four, 19. And we have some more? Okay, so if you're choosing odd number, okay. You will be washing the dishes. And if you're choosing even number, you are cleaning the kitchen. Therefore, that's your task of the day. If you choose at numbers 1, 7, 29, 23, 39, 77, 105, and so on and so forth, your task is to wash the dishes. And if you choose even numbers like 2, 6, 12, 32, 44, you will be uh, cleaning the kitchen. Okay, let's check in. Now, dishwashers, are you done? How long did it take? What is one thing you notice while washing the dishes? How about the cleaners? I think you are still working. What kinds of things you are doing? Washing the floor? Yes, I, are you wiping the counters? Perhaps you're taking out the trash? Maybe you're washing the dishes. Now, what is one thing you notice while cleaning the kitchen? Okay. So which one is and which one is a task? Now this time, let's try to differentiate which one is an activity and which one is a task. When you're washing dishes and cleaning the kitchen, what do you use? Perhaps your students would say soap, washcloth, sponge, or scrubby. When you're cleaning the kitchen, perhaps your students would say dishes, floor, counter, trash, refrigerator. Or perhaps when your students are asked, what did you do? Learners would say rinse, dry. And for cleaning the kitchen, they sweep, they wash, they take out, wipe off and clean out. And when they are asked, why did you wash the dishes? And why did you clean the kitchen? Probably their answer would say, because it stopped hard and it's greasy. And for cleaning the kitchen, they would probably say messy because it's dirty or perhaps it's greasy or per perhaps it's full. Now, if you notice, grammar has been used to nouns, Verbs and adjectives has been integrated in the activity. The language has been used practically in as a situation that is likely to actually take place. And a simple activity in a simple task, language has been integrated. Now, which one is an activity and which one is a task? What do you think? Let me check the participants. Which one is an activity and which one is a task? Okay. 
So let me see what's your answer. Let me check the chat box, including the chat. Okay, so washing the dishes is activity, and cleaning the kitchen, on the other hand, is a task. Okay, so based on the example, washing the dishes requires one to wash the dishes alone, while cleaning the kitchen requires one to do multiple activities. What is in the kitchen? Now, such as sweeping the floor, like wiping the counters, like out the trash, or clean the refrigerator. So, washing the dishes is an activity, and cleaning the kitchen is a task. So, basically, what is a task? Let's try to check what a task is. In a task-based instruction, one may be used as a springboard. Teacher here presents the concept, an item of language in a clear context to get across its meaning. This can be done in a variety of ways, put text, a situation build, dialogue, a play or a game, and so on and so forth. In my class, I usually start with a drill to make the class uh, um, ready for the day's lesson. Usually, I give them a answer. Now, the next one is activity two. Now, activity two is the controlled activity. Here, the le learners start to understand the language. Students are then asked to complete a controlled practice. This is called the controlled speech, where we have to repeat the items through choral and individual reading. Build the gaps or much have sort of sentences. All of the practices demand that the students uses the language correctly and helps them to become more comfortable by using the language. How about number activity three? Activity is a freer activity. The word freer, meaning they are given the freedom to do the work. But here, not the total freedom. Students here move to the production stage, number eight now. It's called the pre-practice stage. Students are given application tasks, such as a role play perhaps, or whatever is suitable for the context, are expected to produce the correct language and use any other language that has been already learned and is suitable for completing it. And finally, activity four, is accessible concrete product. The teacher here is able to determine whether the learners are producing accurately the target language. So this time, the teacher does the monitoring. In our lesson, in this assess, in the, uh, this is the assessment part. It could be in a form of a quiz, a performance test, or a, perhaps a written output. This explains what task is. So what is really a task? Notice there are four activities that comprises a task. The graph presented it said activities from activity one to four are emphasized according to its size. If you notice it, uh, four activity four is the biggest among the activities. If you notice activity four is great as a greater function. And our end goal here is to determine whether our learners have fully show, shown a concrete product and that is producing an accurate language. This set of activities, when combined together, is called a task-based activity. The teacher is able to see the learner learn the language and that will require them to learn. So activity one, springboard. Activity two, the control. Activity the freer practice and activity for the accessible concrete product. But take note, a task has more than one activity. So cleaning, washing the dishes is just an activity. It is only one activity. But uh, cleaning the kitchen is a task because it comprises a lot of things to work on. So a task has more than one activity which demonstrates a springboard, a controlled practice, freer practice, 
accessible concrete product. Now, others uh, this uh, Chris labeled this as uh, four piece paradigm, or oh, not the uh, familia Filipino program, but the plan, produce, practice, and product. Okay, so our, we understand what um, a task is. So let's proceed. What are the characteristics of communicative grammar activity? Okay, this has been discussed to you by the sessions with Dr. Felix, elaborated in the second session again by Dr. Gisalu, and discussed with Dr. Gemma and Sir Mars, and even Dr. Paul in the sessions. First characteristic we have here, students need to communicate in order to be successful. Now, in the communicative grammar activity, a student is required to speak, and by the time the learner is able to speak, they're able to express thoughts in the language successfully. We are also successful as teachers with our objectives of the day. So we can say that the competency of the day has been achieved. Second, communicative grammar activity is meaningful and relevant to students. If it's our role teachers to be very creative in finding out uh, what activity to give for our students according to their needs and their, their level of interest. By using realistic, relevant, meaningful activities, students tend to increase their engagement because they have understood they are interested in the topic. So these activities are real life situations. Their communication. Communicative activities have real purposes such as finding and exchanging information, breaking down careers, talking to about a certain topic, and learning about a culture. Students here start to go out from their shell and they start to speak. In life, education is the target. Learners are trained not to be linguistically competent, but also communicatively and social linguistically competent. Now, learning is maximized when students are engaged in relevant tasks within a dynamic learning environment instead of traditional teacher-centered classes. Remember, what we are creating here in a task-based teaching is a student-centered environment. Now, let's see the third characteristic. Communicative grammar has a comprehensible input, making sure that students are able to grasp instruction well and understand input for the peer practice, able to produce quality and accessible product or performance. Depression, this has been discussed also by Doc Jessilu in her in his discussion, uh, presence theory of language acquisition. Giving learners this kind of input helps them acquire language naturally rather than learning it consciously. Okay, but another characteristic is as an authentic context. So learners right away grasp lessons, understand them and even internalize them because existing situations are true to their experiences. Somewhat they can relate and they can express. The type or the concepts are familiar to them. Teachers may, may not find it hard to interconnect ideas from one of the other because learners are able to connect to the situation. Now lastly, one of the practices here may incorporate scaffolding to lower the risk of effective, effective filter. Now, the negative feelings such as lack of motivation, the lack of confidence, or even the lack of idea to relate in a given situation act as filters that hinder the abstract language learning. So that's why it's very important to give them a very motivating, interesting activity. Now, this is why communicative activities should be motivating again. This use scaffolding for learning the target language. Learning is achieved while learners are having fun. So learners gain accurate products of learning the language. Yes, it is. This is very true in our classroom when students are very students are to be very active inside the classroom when they find the topic very 
interesting and motivating. So from that, I as very good. Okay, the next one. Okay, it has an activity class to things. Okay. We have here an authentic outcome in addition to the language. When we say authentic outcome, this refers to the result of our goals. This refers to our dream of using competent speakers of the language. This refers to connecting a deep absorption of concept with the real world. We make our learners create an extraordinary work. Okay. This is based on the idea that learning a language successfully comes through having to communicate real meaning. So when learners are involved in a real communication, their natural strategies, strategies for language uh, learning will be used, and this will allow them to learn to use the language more effectively. Second, please. It's an opportunity for reflection on language. How? Reflect will need to be taught and scolded. Now, the importance of scolding this time uh, will let our students from the test is a good opportunity for them to reflect and learn more in the language. If you notice, when we do scolding during group activity, uh, when we try to speak errors and give further explanations, stand well, students tend to show gestures signaling reflection. Ah, modi ay, modi ay, you know, say, saying like that. Now, because this personal develop, uh, zone development theory does not only focus on cognitive development of the learner, wherein the language is used as a tool, but it is also used as a tool for reflection. So, trust basically is also a, uh, a tool for reflection. Okay, next, functional outcome is an authentic product. Okay, let's go back to the example earlier. Washing dishes is part of cleaning the kitchen. The clean kitchen is not only the washing of the dishes, but a complete product of having, of, of having washed dishes plus other things. Now, when we say this is solidified real life experiences. This refers to the tangible result of learning, which is visibly seen by exposure provided by the teacher. Now, let us remember that learners learn best as they manipulate things and the teacher facilitate their learning. So exposing learners to class-based instruction is also exposing them to learn the language concretely. So another one, deciding what to buy is part of a planning a party. The party plan is not the list, the nutrition or not the same, but a concrete product of having chosen food plus other things, the invitation to make, invitees, the setup, the decoration, the theme, or other stuff to prepare. Now, communicative language teaching enables us to see here concrete product of the task with that engaging task provided by the teacher, learners come up with a concrete outcome. Reflection in language based learning. Okay, let's go back again with our example example earlier. Washing the dishes is part of cleaning the kitchen. Now, a clean kitchen is nice, but thinking back on what you did and how you did it could lead to better cleaning in the future or modifying your kitchen habits. If students are time are exposed to a certain task and they're given time to, to reflect on their task, soon when they're given the same task, they're able to reflect and improve their performance. Now, deciding what food to buy is part of planning a party. A party plan requires language and it can reflect on, revise, practice, and use again. Similar with our strategies inside the classroom. Our plan, we can plan, but we can revise as well. Okay. May I ask you how many of you would have inside after the activity? I ask uh, participants how many of you would have to ask inside the activity? 
Okay. Is this usually found at the last part of our lesson? The concluding activity, are you fond of doing that? The concluding activity. Perhaps you can present a quote uh, related to the topic or even a line of a poem or a, or a song or use this as a reflective tool for the day's learning using the language. For that, the teacher is able to measure how far the students have learned. And this allows the teachers to reflect our performance, how we have imparted today's lesson. Okay. Let's proceed. Naghamsha. Are you still there? Okay. Reflection on language, how? The big question is how. Look at the how, how it is being emphasized, capitalized. Reflection on language falls in a big question, how? How are we going to make it achievable? How are we going to make it meaningful? Now, how we can achieve authentic and creative opportunity to reflect on the language. Now, let us make a formula for a grammar used to create a chant, a poem, a rap, actions. When I was teaching grammar in grade nine, especially when I was handling that, that year level, uh, I, I was handling grammar. Okay. My grammar folks, I usually create formula. So for example, one of the topics of the students find it hard is converting sentences from passive to active or vice versa, or changing sentences from direct discourse to indirect discourse or vice versa. Now what I did, I give them Formula, similar with mathematics, I usually give them a question. So, for example, reported verb plus the connector that to WH, whether if plus the main plus. Okay. From that certain formula, um, their students are able to connect or have an idea what comes next with a formulation of sentences. Now, you can also create a chant, a poem, a rap, or action, or many interesting activities you can give to your students. Okay. Make a meme of, of a grammar use or of, of self listening or to recording, to our recording. Now, what are the other activities that we use in the classroom that helps our learners communicate well with their peers and produce an authentic outcome? So, we can use the differentiation activity. So this is my very favorite part, the differentiation part. In the different, uh, differentiation, you can either choose which one to differ. Maybe perhaps you can differentiate through context. You can differentiate through interests, the level of interest of the, of the learners, be the capacity of the learners. My favorite part, uh, favorite um, strategy for differentiation is cubing. Are you familiar with cubing? Anyone who is familiar with cubing? You know, it's a cube. There are four, there are six sides. That represents Bloom's taxonomy, right? So we have uh, the first level is the literal level, then to the, in, the interpretative, then to the critical level, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's proceed with. Okay, as a review, characteristics of communicative grammar activity. To summarize, these are the characteristics of communicative grammar activity. Now, students need in order to be successful, meaningful, relevant to the students, has comprehensible input, has an authentic context, may incorporate scaffolding and to lower the risk of language, and a task. As for task based learning, has an outcome in addition to the language based on the authentic context and provides opportunities for reflection on language use or what we call the meta commission. Now, task based language teaching, also known as task based instruction, is on the use of authentic language and on asking students to do meaningful tasks using the target language. Assessment here is primarily based on past outcome. Okay, so this makes uh, TBLD especially popular in developing target language fluency and students, and somehow develops 
students confidence. Let's proceed with the next one. What are the types of tests? Now, according to Abu, there are three main categories of tests. The first one is information gap. What is information gap? When we say gap, there is a, a space that's needed to be filled. There is a need to be addressed. There is a problem that is needed to be solved. And there is a question that's needed to be answered. When we say information gap, there is a transfer of information from one person to another. When our learner starts to ask and request for information, when they ask for clarification or instruction or trying to negotiate meaning, form that our learner, uh, our instruction is an information gap. Now, information gap which involves a transfer of information from one person to another or from one form to another, from one place to another, generally calling for the decoding or decoding of information from one or two language. One example is a pair of work in which each member of the pair has part of the total instruction information. Now, another example is completing a tabular presentation, perhaps, with information available in a given piece of text. The activity often involves selection of relevant information as well, and learners may have to meet criteria of completeness and correct in making the transfer. One example, another example of the information gap is creating a questionnaire or uh, for a job interview or a role play. Now, in the classroom setting, this will encourage my students to ask questions. When students start to answer, I usually give reinforcements or thanking them for the questions given, just to give them an assurance that I am pleased to answer and entertain their questions. When students are confused, they, are, they start to ask. When they start to ask, they start to communicate. And when they communicate, uh, language is used. And when language is used, their information gap field. Okay, right? Number one is reasoning gap. Okay, so the second step here is reasoning gap. Understand and share information that is sourced from other places. Use reason and logic to decide that informa what information to share or solve the problem. Plan a trip that includes deciding where to go and how to get there for a brochure, okay? We say a reasoning, a reasoning up activity involves deriving from new information, from given information through processes of inference, a deduction, a practical reasoning, or a perception of relationships of patterns. Example is deciding what course of action is best, or what is the cheapest to buy, or what is the quickest way to go for a given purpose and within a given constraints. The activity necessarily involves comprehending and conveying information as in an information gap activity, but information to be made in is not identical with but initially comprehended. There is a piece of reasoning which connects the two. Okay. Another one is the opinion gap. Okay. Opinion gap shares personal experience preferences. Okay, feelings or ideas about particular situation. For example, take part in the uh, uh, students here take part in the discussion. For example, having a debate about a political issue. This is for higher proficiency level students because if this one is given to the lower proficiency level students, nobody can talk, nobody can, nobody can share, nobody can defend. No, so. Complete a story and play it is an example of a, uh, an activity for lower proficiency level students. And in that activity involves identifying and articulating personal preference, feeling, or attitude in response to the given situation. One example is a story completion. Another is part of the discussion is a social issue. Now let's talk about differentiation, okay? Differentiation here also matters in this type of activity. Differentiation falls in the three categories, information gap, reasoning gap, and opinion gap. That's why I like this in differentiation. Okay, so let's proceed with 
the next one. Talking about differentiation, this one is all about all ages, all languages. This is the Bloom's taxonomy. Can you type in the chat box one skill that comprises the Bloom's taxonomy? Anyone from the group remember what's in the Bloom's taxonomy? There are six skills in the Bloom's taxonomy. Can I request our audience? Are you still there? <laughs> Anyone? What are the skills in the Bloom's economy? Oh, are you still there? Okay, so we have, yes, great. Yes, I'm thinking, Mom, Melinda, Celia, yes. Mom, Minda, I will wait, great. Yes, correct, what else? Yes, correct, I will wait. Analyze, apply, very good, Mom. Dr. Alba, knowledge comprehension, analysis, application, evaluation. Thank you, Mom Jeline. Analyze. Okay, remember, Mom Ivy. Okay, there you go, Mom Ivy. Thank you. Okay, so what comprises the uh, Bloom's economy? Okay, that's it. Now, everyone is familiar with this, and we've been using this one every time we formulate questions for our quarterly uh, exam. Remember, we used 30, 60, 10. 34, uh, 64, what do you call that? 64, that is a type of question. 30 for the uh, average question and 10 for the difficult part. In fact, this diagram is the old version. Okay. This is it. Okay. This is the old version, by the way. Because the new version, knowledge is already remembering. Comprehension is understanding. Applying and analyzing. We have synthesis is already evaluating and evaluation is already creating. So knowledge and comprehension are the low level thinking skills. Applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating belong to the higher level thinking skills. Now taking a look at the diagram, the Bloom's taxonomy demonstrates the types of tasks in a communicative grammar activity. Now remembering and understanding covers the information gap, which falls on the low level thinking skills. What, where, the when, the how, and the, uh, not, not the why. Applying and analyzing processes reasoning gap and evaluating and creating addresses opinion gap, which again in the diagram belongs to the higher thinking skills. Now, usually in the information gap, the low level proficiency student in this area. And then the reasoning gap and the opinion gap uh, are on the mid and the high proficient learners. Now, if you try to think back with a discussion on what the task is, okay, this board, the presentation of the concept falls on the lower level thinking skills, which demonstrates information gap. The practice and the prior practice belong to the higher level thinking skills which then, and again, demonstrates the reasoning gap where students produce out from the concepts they understood. And the rating part is the accessible concrete product. This is the opinion gap where students justify defense opinions by making judgments about information, validity of ideas, or quality of work on the set of criteria. Now let's proceed with the following examples. Let's go back with the types of tasks, information, reasoning, and opinion. Now let us identify the following. Is it a doctor, a dentist? Now is it an opinion gap, information gap, or a reasoning gap? Okay, how about this? Uh, visiting a doctor or dentist, is it an opinion gap, information, or a reasoning gap? What do you think? May I ask once again our uh, participants, what kind of task is visiting a doctor or um, a dentist? Okay, is it opinion? Is it reasoning? Or is it information gap? Okay. Yes, mom, Cecilia. 
It is correct. It is an information gap. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mom. Let's proceed to the next example. Planning a family work, a friend, an event, or a party, or a celebration. Making a poster or advertisement, okay, in the form of paper, audio, or digital. Is that information, reasoning, or uh, it is... Excuse me. I, sorry. Mom parents? Yes, sir. Parents, yeah. uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption, mom parents. But yes. May, may I... The... the the audio has been choppy for for a while, so it's been choppy. So may I ask mom, you mom parents to to just take off your headset, maybe, okay. so that we can try so that, to see or to check on whether it's not it it's not choppy or not. He says, to me, sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, mom parents. Could is you it, please? Is it all right? Okay. Could could you please? Talk again, mom parents. Hello, mom parents. Hello. Hello. Is it, am I audible? Okay. Take off the 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 wire also from your laptop, mom parents. From the wire for your headphone. Yes. So that we yes. Yeah. Have you have you taken it off? Yes, sir. Okay. I I think it's better. I guess. Mom parents. Is it hello? All right? Sorry for that internet connection. No. Ah, yes, I think it's the internet connection. Yes. Okay. Okay. Shall so, I proceed? Okay. Uh, please do proceed, ma'am parents. Thank you very much. Sorry for thank the interruption, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Let's read now. Okay, so planning a family work for a friend, uh, attending an event or a party, poster or advertisement is an example of this reasoning. Okay. Next, having a debate, a discussion about an issue or a certain topic, making a short movie, role play about a certain topic is that is okay that is an opinion gap okay so we have a test can be in different types have multiple types it could be a combination of the three information reasoning and opinion now any on the content and the questions you are asking to our students okay, let's see at that you here my parents, um, yes. your face is not anymore shown in the screen. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, my parents, uh, please show your face in this screen. Your uh, Only half of your face is seen in the screen. Is it right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry yes, for yes. that. There you go. You yes, my parents. It's okay. Sorry, sorry report. for the interruption, everyone. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so... Let's, sorry for that. So for the um, summary, let us make a cl closer look again. There are three main categories of tests. Information gap. This is a transfer or, or request for information. Now, um, reasoning gap. And opinion gap. Now, reasoning gap uses reason and logic for decision making. Opinion gap. This is sharing of personal experience. Experiences or preferences or links. Okay, next slide. Okay, books rarely have tests. They do have language. Books rarely have tests. They do have language. Now, it is our task teachers to let our learners in with the test lessons and expose them post our learners to the language we require them to learn. Let us allow our learners get into what we call the real operating conditions. And this will provide opportunities for our learners to develop both accuracy and fluency. Okay, so start here, language to test. So let's go back with washing the dishes. Move on, washing the dishes happen. As you imagine when you are washing the dishes or cleaning the kitchen, what language do you use? So check your follow along notes. This is the language that is being used. These kinds of nouns, wash, washing the dishes or cleaning the kitchen, a couple of verbs for cleaning the kitchen and some adjectives that describes uh, while cleaning the kitchen, set of language are derived from the past. Now, as you see, okay, 
there is a connection between what we do and the language that we use. This is where communicative language teaching works. The tasks and language go, go hand in hand. Mr. Oximesis, no? These two things, the task and the language, we can create good context. So what makes good context? What is a good context? Okay, so the first thing that would come out of our mind when we say context is the meaning of or the message influences the communication process. Now, it is the situation in which the language of interest occurs. It must have basically the questions who, what, where, when, and why. These are the basic questions that is needed to be there to be very understandable. Now, in also with uh, in basically when we relate this one in research, in the scope and limitation of the study, this following questions what, where, and when, why answers everything in the research. Now, we can describe the context, the background, the environment, the setting, the framework, the surrounding of events or occurrences. Simply, context means circumstances, forming a background of an event, idea of a statement in such a way as to enable readers or listeners to understand a piece of information. Next one, context is a situation that is clear to clear enough so that when a message is delivered, it would not create miscommunication. So context must be relevant enough. It arouses interest with our learners. It already, uh, the, uh, with a situation that they already know, and they can interact with that certain situation using that first language. Now, let's proceed with examples of language one. Oh, for the language focus, for example, we have the chores, dishes, counter, brush, refrigerator, floor, wash, wipe, clean out, clean out, or sweep. Now, this example, you are moving into a shared apartment. You're having a meeting at the coffee shop to talk about responsibilities, specifically the kitchen. As decided, we put up a reminder poster on the refrigerator of each person's chores. Now you require your students to do the authentic, authentic, accessible tasks. Now what to do? Make a cartoon or other visual aid for kitchen chores. Now preferably this example is good for low level proficient students. Next example, language two. Okay. Now language focus for example is as Likes, dislikes, wants, needs, adjectives of appearance. Now, for example, context. Late at night, a visitor from Mars landed on the roof of your building while you were talking with your friends. You were able to take a few photos and have a short conversation before the alien left. A local blogger found out how, how they want you to write a story about alien. Now, for the authentic tasks, your are asked to Right story for a local blogger. Now, see, this is example as well, example for students who have a low level profession. Now, vocabulary such as is, as, this, these are very simple, and this is simple for the students as well. Another, one more last example for context three. Okay, language focus, angry, frustrated, worried, Turn. We have here a language focus conditionals. Okay, example context. My car broke down in the way to Laren City yesterday afternoon. All of my food stall bruisers were in the back seat. When I was going to call a friend, I noticed my phone needed to be recharged. I locked the car and walked down the road to our house to ask for help. Now, your students are asked to relate or create or perform a play, okay? Now this type of example of context is good for students to have higher level proficiency because they are already uh, 
formulate their own, they can create, they can explore, they can imagine, and more. Now, let's proceed with the steps in planning and delivery. What are the steps for a task based learning? We have an idea about language and context. Make sure that the teachers has an idea about language and the context we are going to give for our learners. How do we plan and deliver a task or a task-based lesson? That's a big question. Now, the question there is how? You say, it's easy to, do, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to plan, it's easy to think, but it's hard to do because this requires a lot of time. Okay. Now, let's make it simple let's keep it simple okay, again we follow the smart attainable reasonable and confident let me consider the ps as well this is rather i must be concise it must be clear it must be concrete now let's proceed with planning how do we plan before the class okay now first we have to uh, identify the language. You have to choose the language goal and identifying the language skills necessary to meet that goal. Of course, we have to base it the curriculum guide. For example, is, has, likes, dislikes, wants, needs, and objective appearance. The, the language focus is found in our blueprint. I mean, in our Bible, our milk. The next thing to do in planning is to determine the context. Now, a good context, as we have discussed earlier, means who, the what, why, the when, the where, and the situation, of course. In planning, other considerations, we use, um, we, we need to take a look and think about what else your learners need. Okay, what additional grammar might they need? And what vocabulary might be specific in the context you are giving them. And we can put out planning, right? But we can substantially teach well when we plan. Let me repeat on that line. We teachers can teach without planning. That's so easy. And substantially teach well we do the planning. In communicative teaching, it is essential to plan. Since our end goal here is to produce a communicatively competent learners. Okay. So let's proceed. The next one is delivery. In the delivery, this is the introduction of the grammar focus. Okay. So you have to teacher needs to find out what they already know, activate prior knowledge. Combine what they uh, uh, what they need uh, with reviewing any grammatical structures uh, very necessary. Now, what are the examples of activities that can be used as a springboard introducing communicative language teaching? And here are some: brainstorming, okay, eliciting, mind mapping, listening or reading, telling a story, asking to imagine and showing pictures. Uh, I will no longer elaborate these things because this is very clear to you. So during the during this time, in the introduction of grammar, the teacher introduces here the topic and gives the students clear instruction on what they will have to do and age and might help them help the students recall some language that may be useful for that. The pre-test stage, since this is the pre-test stage, also include playing, recording, or recording of people doing the test. So this gives us a clear model of what will be expected of them. So the students take notes and spend time preparing for the test stage. The next step is the task preparation. Here, the teacher introduces the task. Make sure that learners understand exactly what you are trying to let them achieve. So they should understand their task goal that is tangible, something that they can see, something that they can hear, something that they can measure, or something that is accessible to them. An example here, a task here is writing a story for a local blogger, perhaps. Okay. Now, what 
product are they create? The product that they are going to create here is a lag. Okay. Except during the first year perform the test this time, students interact with one another. Now they go from one person to another in their respective groups to access the test while using that certain language. Assigned test, they will most likely use grammar structure. So they now apply the grammar structure introduced by the teacher and that they already formed. They wish to keep the language visible during most of the tasks, but take it down during the presentation part. Now, during the presentation, it is the task of the teacher to note down the strengths and the weaknesses of our learners. This will depend on what they are noticing as you monitor groups and provide additional language. Now, actually, the focus in this class is fluency. Okay? Again, for this page or for this step, the tier is fluency. The next stage is learners self evaluate. Okay? So learners have time to reflect. This stage is the review stage. Learners will go over and self-evaluate their performance. Once the learners have accomplished or completed their tasks uh, and have something to show, time to self-evaluate and review. Reflect on the product. Let them go back to their product and how they arrived at the product. How did the students do it? Facilitate group discussions of the product performance of the task may wish to refer to the brainstorming or other evidence of language. So have students write, discuss how they accomplish the language goal, whether they use the grammatical structures you presented or not, and what other strategies they use. Peer evaluation is also preferable. If during monitoring you say many that error or common errors are many, the teacher led uh, delayed action is also helpful because they are going to discover it by themselves. But usually, if learners who are low level patient, the teachers must there. Now, learners need to be taught how to do this. Now, using a checklist perhaps is a good idea. Scaffolding for getting started. You may also wish to skip this step if you have younger or less patient language learners because you might be consuming much of your time you, know? and you might use uh, they might use the first language to discuss your language content. now in this stage our aim here is accuracy not the fluency but the accuracy this is reflecting on complete work utilizing it we're almost done okay, the last one is the posts the teacher focus on a specific language structure. Now, the final stage for presenting the task based grammar lesson is time on grammatical points at hand. This final stage as a lesson is where students practice a particular structure and you can give feedback on accuracy. Now, remember this point, uh, they are focusing on accuracy. It looks more like traditional grammar class. However, it comes at the end of the lesson and isn't size at the cost of fluency. This time, discussion in grammar structure is, is happening. Now, teacher, this is, uh, this is usually the, the teacher lecture discussion. A lecture by the teacher. Traditional um, grammar discussion. So as a recap, these are the steps of tasks simplified, okay, into three. Okay, we have okay, pre-test and task preparation. When I say pre-test and task preparation, this is pre-teaching the language. You are setting the context, their, their prior knowledge, them assignment, assigning the tasks. Now, during the tasks, okay, in this, in this part, learners now perform the tasks, plan, and it. They create, they present. 
now, which includes observable product or additional outcome. Now, the last part of the steps there presented is the post-test reflection part, the metacognition. Here comes the insights, which may include not seeing verification, the practice of language, and giving of reviews and insights. And pre-test and the test preparation during the test and the post-test. Three simple steps of test-based lesson. Okay. Now, delivery in action, a demonstration video. Now, this will cover almost four minutes. Planning has already happened. I want you to watch the video here. This is a task. A task is to plan a party. Now, to find out three ideas for introducing the language. What does the teacher do when learners are preparing and presenting? What are her four categories of notes? And what happens in her post? Now, allow me to share to you my video. Let me stop sharing first. Wait, wait for first. Yeah, while Sir Jisulu, while I am still looking for my video, I'm sorry for this is because yes. of the connection. <laughs> yes, okay. So Mom Pernes is still waiting for uh, is trying to resolve some issues with the internet later on. Um, she'll be continuing with the presentation with a video, I guess, Ma'am Pernes. Okay, yes. okay, yes. So um, by now, we are about to finish the session six. And I hope that you can you can share your questions. You can think of questions already, or you can think of insights already on what you would like to add or any question you would like to ask so that you can drop it in the in the chat box after the whole session is done. So I hope that we can do that. And by the way, earlier we had some we had some issues with the internet. We had some issues with the internet connection, but then um, it was not that much resolved. But I hope that you are still following the discussion that we've had. Okay. Through the PowerPoint, for, uh, through the slides that were shared, the slides which were shared were clear, or it may not, it may be blurry for some, but then, but then I hope that you are still able to read it for a bit and do do some screenshot of it. So we apologize for that one. Okay, so we have Mom Burness again back for the screen sharing. Yes. Thank you, sir. You should go during task and post task. Let's get started. Step one is the pre-cast. The pre-cast stage should mentally and linguistically prepare your students for the upcoming class level. There are many ways to do this. In this demo, I show you three ideas. Okay. Who makes a good party? Okay. 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 Idea number one would be the use of brainstorming with the word web. Okay. In your groups, I want you to keep going. Okay? Keep going. What do you think? What are some things that make a good party? Brainstorm idea number two would be the use of pictures and or discussion questions. And perhaps the most common activity would be idea number three, having your students read or listen to a model text that mimics the language they will use in the task ahead. Look at the picture of the people. What do you think we're going to listen to? 
Yes, all right, we're going to listen to them plan a surprise party. Good, good. In stage two, you will prepare your students to be able to complete the upcoming task on their own. In order to do this, you need to give very clear directions. I commonly give each group one piece of paper with a step-by-step -step handout or a checklist for them to follow. First, I want everyone to get into groups of three. All right, first get into your groups. You're gonna follow the handout. And then after, give us maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, you're gonna present your party idea to the class. Are you guys excited? All right, it's gonna be fun. Let's get started. In this important stage, students begin to independently build their task. Group collaboration and creativity take hold, and generally it's the fun and exciting part of the task. I quietly circulate around the room and make note of any weak or strong language features on a clipboard. Make sure that you encourage use of the target language. After this, the students will then act or present out their tasks. It's the point where I hope they proudly display their creativity and stretch their language abilities in doing so. As a teacher, I continue to remain low key and continue to quietly take notes on the language being used. It's a fluency activity, so I don't commonly interrupt unless asked for help. If set up well, the stage is fun and engaging for everyone. When I'm done, my clipboard is often covered. To keep me organized, I take notes into categories. Only the most important language features get addressed. Always point out both strong and weak language features. To complete the activity, I address those key language features on the board with the class, and we reflect on the language we've learned through completing the task. This concludes my demo video. Please note there are many ways Turn this. You please turn on your your mic, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Turn on your audio, ma'am. Please. Thank you. Sorry for lag. Yang akong laptop. Sorry for that. Yes, so, it's okay. Ideas yeah. for introducing language. Okay. So we have there brainstorm, word web, pictures, read or listen thing the teacher does what does the teacher do when learners are preparing and presenting okay. monitor the performance of the learners provides requested language and they make notes in the follow along okay how about in the follow along what are her four categories of notes we have noticed there the teacher has been writing something in the notebook so the teacher there is Oh my, sorry for this delay. Okay, so the teacher has been listing vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and other stuff, culture perhaps, no, in her notebook. So it is necessary for, the, for us teachers to follow along, write down things, the strengths and the weaknesses of our learners once they have presented their notebooks, as they presented their um, tasks. What happens, by the way, in the post-class, okay? In the post-class, she reviews the content of her notes with the learners. Time is the review portion. The teacher is asking the learners how they come up with their 
learning? How they come up with their um, learn the language rather? Now let's proceed. There are two considerations, by the way, as we uh, conduct uh, um, space lessons in our classes. There are two types of learners. We have mid-level and advanced competency learners. They are enthusiastic. They are students who, are, who, who doesn't need a model. Now, model here is not no longer important. It might even be a bad idea. Now, giving a model to carry your students in a particular direction. And think that's what you want and try to please you. Now, giving a model lets them really use their imagination and creativity. This is type of learner, the mid-level and advanced agency learners can create and work independently, so no longer scaffold their learning. This one, the other one is younger or less proficient learners. This time, this type of learner needs your assistance. They need a model. A model is really necessary or there's a danger of ending up with low quality work. Now, if you've noticed when you are giving activity to your class, Perhaps you're giving them performance tests to work on. Now, for learners who are younger or less proficient learners, you can expect with a very good output. But those group who has, or say most of them are mid-level and advanced level proficient learners, they have really a good quality of outputs. Now, this time, this is the function of teacher to scaffold learning the scaffold language in the younger or less proficient learners. They need your assistance much. Okay, so it's wrapping and um, corrections. Now, while students are working in groups or pairs, teachers, the teacher has to go from one corner to the other and make a follow-up monitor the of the learners. This is one thing I do not, I, I, I do not like to, to neglect. I want the group to in their tasks and they have both one corner to the other just to follow up with their performance. So if students uh, work with their tasks but not being monitored, they will not do their tasks right away. So they have to carry. Okay. Next one, corrections. We have considered the following corrections. Now, have the students correct the mistakes in small groups and compare their answers with other small groups. Okay, sometimes it's very useful, you know? Uh, correcting with their groups can even lead them to finding out where they have started and what they have to do next. Okay, question two. Have just small group work on two or three sentences and then present, explain their questions to the class. This is group sharing with their insights and let the class um, inform insights and with their questions and how they first. This one, correction three. We make a worksheet it's to be used in any of the above ways or a given as a more so we can use either any of the three as we monitor students for their performance performing the class, their performance of the test. Okay. okay. As a summary, so we have explored the difference between activity and the tasks. We created tasks based on grammar or language. We have done that. We listed three types of tasks. We have discussed already. We thought about the importance of seeding the context. We explored the steps of planning and delivering a task. And we have observed a delivery of a task based on the video presented. Okay. So that is all for today. I am sure everyone is also um, being more, um, has more to do with their classes, respective classes. So for your assignment, you have to, for more information, you can go to the following websites or go to the page for our group, Junior High School English Teachers. And for your assignment, answer the following questions. Number one, how? How did you discover the language of your assigned activity? Okay. Number two, 
created past the lesson, the lesson plan that you made, webinar five assignment. Okay, that must be integrated in that plan. So much for your session um, assignment. Only um, screenshot, add the link, then submission will be on September 20, 2021. Okay, so follow the format, family name, family name your first name, okay, underscore session six in submitting your assignment. Thank you so much. Sir Jisilu. Yes, thank you very much, Ma'am Pernis, for your wonderful delivery of your <clears throat> of your task for this afternoon. I wrote in here some words that tries to describe you, and I, I ended up with the words succinct. Yes, it's very fleshy discussion that was really wonderfully done, Mom Ferns. Thank it you. was example filled. I had a lot of examples. You also shared a lot of examples from your real life that was wonderful. And it's engaging, although there are problems with our audio because of the internet connection, but still the participants still did engage. And Mom Pernes was able to squeeze that from you. Thank you very much. That was such a wonderful presentation. Learning field, really, Mom Pernes. Let's Thank give Mom Pernes a round of applause. Thank you, Mom Pernes. Thank you, Mom Pernes. But later on, we'll still be with Mom Pernes and Mom Mary Lou for the for the Q and A portion. But Mom Pernes, please do, please do take a rest for a while. I know okay. that you're tired delivering things. Maybe for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> You can drink water, you can do some health break. We can we are also asking the audience to also do some health break if you like for a bit of while. Well, I'm going to give you some announcements that announcement. Finally, we're done with all of the sessions of session one to session six. Thank you very much to everyone for being with us. Now we have 79 participants, and I think that is a constant number. We have about 70 up to 90 participants. Thank you very much to all of you. And I know that there are still some of you who are in their homes and just watching through Facebook Live who weren't able to get in this in our Zoom meeting. Still, thank you very much to all of you. Now, as a reminder, the time at the time in was already posted in the chat box earlier by Sir Nilo, as well as I think it's also posted in our Facebook group. The time out is also posted for session six is also posted in our Facebook group. So please do visit our Facebook group and do time out in there. I hope that you're also reminded of the assignment of Mam Pernis earlier and that you will be doing that. Submission for entries, are not entries, as if it's an awarding ceremony or what. Submission for your out, of your outputs, the deadline for the submission of your outputs, please do remember that the, 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 the deadline is September 20. Not this Monday, but the Monday after the next Monday. So please be reminded of that. And that is a deadline, right? So we will really be cutting that off at September in oh, at in September 20 and then it is only those who submit it up until September 20 that we will be considering for the for the for the giving of the certificates of participation which you can upload through your email ad the email ad that you use for your registration okay I hope that you did not forget the, the password for your email ad or you did not mistakenly write or encoded your email ad in the registration. Let's pray that it's not wrong and you still remembered your password so that you can claim your certificates of participation. So we have here, Ma'am Maria Ligaya, okay, one of my classmates as well in my MA, Ma'am Maria Ligaya. Sir, I hope all the assignments will be posted too in the Facebook group. That would be good. Okay, so we will be doing something about that that will be taking note, I guess. Ma Mary Lou, yes, Ma Mary Lou, I hope that we can take note that we must be posting, we can, we should be posting the, the assignments on the Facebook group so that they will also be guided on what to do. Okay, in one, just in one place. Okay, because maybe they weren't able to make a screenshot of it. 
Ma Marilu, will that be okay to post all the assignments in the Facebook group? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I think Sir okay. Paul has posted it uh, in the ah. Facebook, sir. And Sir ah, okay. Ronilo also. The assignment, ma'am, the assignment, the, the, the instructions for the assignment. Uh, late after the session, ah. sir. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we'll be... Maybe yes, because... Evening. Yes, because the, the slides will be shared. I, I believe, Mamarilu, right? Am I right? We will be sharing the slides to all of them. All of the slides from sessions one to six, that will, those will be shared in the Facebook group. And they can up, uh, download that. And you can just check the assignment in the later part of the slides. Right, Mamarilu? Uh, you're correct, sir. Yes, you can yes. visit our mm. FB page, sir. Yes. For... for uh, the attachment of the slides yes, for each thank you. speakers. Yes. Thank you very much, Amarilu. And thank you, Ma'am Maria Ligaya, for that, for that, and now for that reminder as well for us. Yes, um, Sir Peter Paul Kubai is now posting the post-test link because after the whole session six, we are to have our post-test. Okay. But that that I guess will be later on after the QA session which are to have one minute more and we can proceed with a q a session so for now i would like to ask everyone to oh not everyone but those who have concerns and those who have insights so please post that in the chat box you can ask question about the session six you can you can give your insights with regards to session six yes okay please do that and later on when we announce we'll be having the post tests already and I hope that you have already fulfilled all of the attendance. A reminder, attendance, evaluation, the outputs are very important for us to consider for your certificates of participation, more so the outputs, okay? And as what, what we are always reminding you, make sure that your outputs are also are original. Please do make or submit an original output to the, to the link that is given to you. So that you can also be engaged in, in doing a lesson on communicative language teaching. Okay, so I think that we are ready. Oh, please do drop in. We are going to be calling Mom Furness or Mom Periguita de Tahan. We call her Mom Furness. Um, we are going to be calling her back as we receive your questions. Okay. Please do give us send your questions here or any congratulatory note of Mom Fairness from Mami Zelda of Busao National High School. Thank you very much, Mom Datahan, for the comprehensive discussion despite the weather condition. Yes, of course. Yes, congratulations, Mom Fairness. Yes, there, the weather. Yes, we cannot. We cannot control the weather condition for now. Uh, our place is even very much cloudy and windy at this moment but still but good for me that the internet connection is is still here i guess for mom Perna's side it's not that stable for now and i know that you're also experiencing that in un instability in your own places okay so thank you very much mommy zelda for your for this one and congratulations when, uh, once again to Mom Pernes for such a wonderful discussion. Yes. Okay, so any more from among you who would like to ask questions or add insights on this matter that we are, to, we are having? Once again, the topic is on going a bit further, communicative tasks. The, it, is, it is just like getting all of the ideas from the previous se sessions from session one to session five. I, I hope that you remember those because those are our, those are our schemas for us to understand session six. We, we repeatedly tell about being authentic or putting a grammar in context and scaffolds. And you, we also recall about free activities and also controlled activities, guided practice, which are very important and also reflection at the end of the lesson, very important matters to consider in communicative language teaching. So can you please do give us some, some insights or any question with regards to the session six, okay? 
So please do try, type it in in the chat box. Okay. So I know that we had a lot of we had a lot of ideas in our mind already because of the discussions which we which we did through all throughout session one up until session six. We have already ended it up. So congratulations for being with us and learning with us as we go along with our webinar. Okay, as we went along because it's already done. So any more, any question from the participants with regards to the discussion which was given by Mom Pernes? Yes, anyone? Any question from among you? Just give me the time to just talk and talk and talk while you are thinking in there for questions. Okay. Yes. Okay. We also discussed about the differences between tasks and activities. It was it was made clearly and presented by it was clearly presented by Mom Pernes actually on the difference between activities and tasks. Okay. Okay, so anyone from the group who would like to ask questions? Again, as was emphasized, asking questions is not a, mar a mark of ignorance, but asking questions is a mark of intelligence, actually, and being inquisitive. And I know that you have questions in with you. Don't be afraid to share it with us. Okay, and maybe hopefully we can answer your questions based on what we've learned also in the regional level of this TGCIP. Yes. Any question from the group? And by the way, thank you for uh, once again for the participation that you have given, uh, that you have made for the whole session six and for the whole for all of the sessions that we've had the last three days. Okay. So you really did participate. Okay. So any more question? Because we have we have already ended it up. That's it. That's it. That's session six. And I know I hope that you solidify the idea of delivering communicative language teaching approach in your classrooms. And that uh, point of clarification, we have one from Mami Zelda. Thank you for this question, Mami Zelda. Okay, point of clarification about the output. Can we do it by school or individually? Okay, maybe Mom Mizelda is asking if they can do it by school or they should be doing it individually. Mom Pernes, yes. Mom Pernes. Yes, the question, so. yes, the question is, um, point of clarific clarification with regards to the output, can we do it by school or should they be doing it individually? Okay, so the output be done individually since you are required to the certificate individual. Is it uh, individual? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so it is to be individually done. Thank you very much, Ms. Zelda, for that clarification. And don't yes, yes, don't forget the 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 file name which is asked by Mom Pernes. It's first name, then last name underscore session two. But at least you have your first name and last name in there or any identification your first name and last name will be our basis to identify on who will be given the certificates of participation. So please do that one in your, in the, as a file name for your output, okay? Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Mami Zelda for, from Busao National High School. How about the other schools? Please do ask question with regards to the webinar session six that we've had on, on teaching grammar communicatively in the Philippines. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So any question from the group? Okay. So once again, we have already the, the attendance, the time out for the attendance in the Facebook, in the Facebook group that we have. Time check, it's already 3.01. Okay, 
So any question, Mom Pernice will really be very willing to answer your questions. Yes. And you heard earlier, I was very right, right? We are classmates and I really know Mom Pernice is very strong in research, even <laughs> though it's a grammar, it's, it's teaching grammar communicatively. She was able to incorporate also some ideas on, 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 on research. She's a research addict, I guess. <laughs> Yes, Mom Pernes. Okay, so I'd like to share a result from a certain study. Yes, yes. It's of task based learning in development skills in academic setting, the English language, English foreign language room. This is uh, actually a study of Mirita Ismaile in 2018. No, our result says that uh, teachers perceive uh, that students. Teachers have a positive effect on students' learning process. So they believe that task-based learning is very beneficial and it has a positive effect on students' learning process because it somehow developed their confidence and it even motivates them to work on their tasks and let them communicate. Mm -hmm. And the students find it, uh, find it that uh, the study reveals rather that Assistant learners enjoy learning English students more. They are more motivated with the tasks with uh, which is the real life than that is in that room. Than that is in the book, coming from the book. So the tasks are central of the learning activity. And the paper reveals that students learn more effectively when their attention is focused on the tasks. <laughs> That's according yes. to the study. Yes. The study board recommends that uh, to offer or to, to strengthen the approach using the variety of enjoyable tasks inside the room. Okay. Yes. See, so, Mom Pernice is a research addict. <laughs> <laughs> Mom Pernice is a research addict. And she, thank you very much for sharing that one, Mom Pernice. That study really quite solidifies the that this is not just a concept, but a very applicable thing, a realistic thing. When we engage our learners, when we when we create the, when we do creative tasks and activities that will perk up their their motivation and 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 interest in our lesson, then they will really be learning a lot, right, Mom Pernes? Right. Then this could be also a good um, action research cycle, no? Yes. 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 Since we are required to do action research in the classroom or classroom based action research, mm. which is our main focus here for our research. Yes, very much. Maybe you can apply that in your, according to Mampernis, you can use those concepts in your action research, especially now that we are in the new normal. There are a lot of avenues for us to research on, there are a lot of ideas which are still undiscovered and how we can do it in a new normal or with modular instruction. So just try to experiment with it. And in order for your experimentation not to be just, not, not to be left un, unshared, you can, you can do that through an action research and it will be more, more gauged, more measured, more, more solid. The results will be solid, more solid because because you tr you researched on it. We are talking now of research, Mom Pernis, yes. Research is the language. Yes, yes of course. Um, language can, is interdisciplinary. Yes. Uh, hello, cannot, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, Mom Mary Lou. Uh, I think uh, there's a question from Mom yes. Justine, oh. sir. Yes, yes. Okay, Mom, yes. Okay. So, Mom Justin Arizola just threw a question in the chat box. Thank you very much, Mom Justin. Thank you, Mom Mary Lou. Hello, ma'am. Among the gaps, which is difficult, among the gaps, maybe she is referring to the information gap, the reasoning gap, and the opinion gap, I guess, um, which is difficult to solve for you. That is from Mom Justin Arizola of the Vegan West Central High School. Hello, teachers of the Vegan West. Yes, Hello, I'm Mom Justine. Hello, Mom Justin Arizola. Okay, thank you for that question, Mom. Okay, so if I were going to ask about that, so what is which of the three gaps is very difficult to solve uh, as teachers? When you say information gap, this is a very basic 
uh, ba- very basic. Well, when I say opinion gap, this is more on the rating, the evaluating part, but this is um, somehow a slight to the reasoning gap. So if I were to ask if the through is hard or say difficult, I would have to say it's a reasoning gap. Mostly our students find it mm. application hard. They are find it hard to synthesize. They find it hard to evaluate things. So mm. reasoning gap is, I think, is the most common, um, problem in our students. Mm. You notice during the exams, okay, there are in the course of our in the formulation of our exams, we formulate. 30, 60, 10, 60, 30, 30 for difficult, and 10 for, uh, for I see, 30 for the average, and uh, yes, correct, right? 10 for the difficult. If you notice, it's really hard on the middle part. So, because the, like the bridge, no? the bridge, it, the, something, something harder is on the middle. Mm. Okay? So, that's only my point. Yes. That's the reasoning gap. The students yes. Ask their language. So this in this re- reasoning gap, the students are required to, to communicate well. So mm. this is the problem of our students. They can't express the language well. Okay. Mm. The reasoning gap. Yes. Yes. It's uh, that's very true, Mumper. And this reasoning gap also for me is quite quite difficult to to get into with the learners because when we say information gap, it's just Basically, on questions on what or how or why, uh, what or not, I mean, what or when or where, those are basic questions. And for opinion gaps, they, they have a lot of ideas on judging or, or, or on their feelings and their perceptions. But on reasoning gap, when you notice that when we ask them questions on why and how, they stop talking, <laughs> they, they, they stop raising their hands at times. Okay, so we should be creative on how we can do that better creatively and more engagingly with the learners, right, Mom Pernes, so that it will yes. be addressed. Right. Yes. And one of the answers for that is the communicative language teaching. So just don't forget about this webinar so that the why and how, the, the, the reasoning gap, the tasks on the reasoning gap could also be in, uh, interesting for the learners or something that they will be able to learn not something that they should be ap- afraid of, okay? So thank you very much from Justin Arizola for your question. That's it, that's it. Questions are coming already. So I guess there will still be a lot of questions coming in. Yes, anyone from the group who would like to ask questions with regards to session six, okay? Okay, so there are a lot of ideas which are presented. Maybe you would like to ask questions with regards to the, the task perspectivity, or you, you would like to share insights also on the types of tasks that you would like to, that that is very difficult for you as asked by mom, Justin Arizola. It's not us who are o- the only ones who are licensed to answer the question given, but you can also share insights on what you think about the questions which are given. That would also be helpful, okay? And if you like to have a a chance to do modes uh, to have a mode of verification and MOV for this for this webinar, you can you can turn on your your video and then try to screenshot to to show your principal that you really participated in the activity. Right? Okay. So so any more. And there was also a very comprehensive discussion earlier of the steps to do. When we are to have our, when we will be, when or how we can deliver communicative language teaching from, from the start up to the reflection part. Okay, so they are already showing their faces. Maybe we can all show our faces before everyone will be leaving. Please don't leave us un- up until the closing program. But if you if you plan to, let's have a, let's have a, um, a screenshot of every one of us, okay? Okay, so you can show your, your faces. Okay. Okay. We're ready for the pictorial. Yes, very good. Thank you very much for sharing all, 
Yes, Ma'am April is really very busy right now. <laughs> but it's okay, Ma'am April. Multitasking, multitasking. I'm very proud of us teachers because we can do it. We can do it even though we, are, we have a lot of things to do. I'm so proud of all of you. Yes, okay. Yes, and... Okay, so still you can share. You, you can show your faces. We ha we are still in page one. Okay, page one or, okay. Hi, 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 everyone. Hi. Yes, Mom Phoebe is saying hi. Mom Justin. Uh, these are the names which I frequently read from the chat box. Mom Jelly and also, okay. Hello, sir. Yes, hello, hello. Okay. Okay, so you can take a screenshot of yourselves. As we have our, as we, okay, take a screenshot. I'm also taking a screenshot right now and saving our faces. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can still drop your questions in the chat chat box, please. We are still very much accommodating of those questions. Now let's have the, the other page. The other page. Uh, okay, I hope that everyone already did. In the first page, we have we have them here. Mom Jerry Lou and Mom Angie. I hope that you can also join. Yes, Mom Angie is already there, smiling and saying hi. Hi, 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 everyone. Okay. Okay, there. There. Okay, wait for a bit while as we proceed with the next page, okay? May I ask Mom Kathleen Joy, some Gray, some Carla to also show your faces for our pictorial. While we are waiting for the questions to come, while we are waiting for some more insights to come, okay? So we get we want to entertain your questions. Don't miss this opportunity of sharing with us. Okay, April, Mama Ma Maria Teresa Orashon, Mama Corazon, Mama Melinda, Mama Pellegrina. Okay, so anyone? Oh, everyone, please do show your faces. The page two is quite a shy group. <laughs> Page two. Yes, okay, they are they are already here. Mom Dolores Mikabini is here. Mom Cecilia. Mom Zelda Coquilia. Thank you for your participation, Mom Zelda, and all, all the rest. Mom Corazon. Okay, Mom Kathleen. Yes, one from Loon South. Mom Jarelu, Mom Carla is here. Okay, please do take a screenshot of yourselves. I hope that you did already. Okay, I'm also going to take a screenshot myself. Hey, Sagi, Yeah, thank you. Okay, nabakunoy saging, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Okay, please do turn off your audio. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so who else? Please show your faces. We I am already the third page. Mom Leia, Mom Sir Joe Darren Estrosas, Mom Rona, Mom Jennifer, Mom Jane Dizon. You can also show your faces and turn on your audio. I mean video. I mean sorry for that. Again, we are still accepting questions from you. Ma'am Pernice will still be very, very willing to answer. Ma'am Marily will also be helping with us as we share ideas in here. Okay? Okay. So, okay. So time check, it's already 3.15 in the afternoon. Okay. So, any more question from the group? Okay. I'm always saying okay, but, but it's really okay. That's why I said okay. Okay, so anyone from the group, any question with regards to 
the sixth session that we've had. But I hope that, again, as I've said, we're already done with all of the sessions. I hope that you have already solidified it in your mind right now. Okay. Any more question? We'll be up um, at 3.30, I guess, Mama Rilu. We can start our closing program at 3.30. Okay, we can start it now. <laughs> oh, we can start it now. <laughs> okay. Yes. okay, because there are so no that... more questions and it would be useless for me to always say, okay, but again, the final reminder, September 20 is the deadline for your output. That is true with all of the teachers around Bohol, not just CD1 junior high school English teachers, but September 20 is a deadline for everyone. And please do make sure to complete doing the clock in and clock out for the attendance and also do the evaluation for sessions one to six. That will be very, very good for you because, and for us as well, because you'll have your certificates of participation received through your email, okay? So I hope that everyone would be, are ready for the closing program, okay? Once again, thank you very much, ma'am that mom Pernes for your delivery of the discussion. Thank you very much. And with that, I would like to present to you, give me the chance to present to you this certificate of recognition. And it reads, Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, Region 7, Central Visayas, Schools Division, Office of Bohol. Certificate of recognition is presented to Dr. Peregrita J. Datahan for having served as learning facilitator or resource speaker during the English proficiency program for teachers and school leaders teaching grammar communicatively in the Philippines. Given at the school's division office of Bohol, Tagbilaran City, Philippines, on the 10th day of September 2021. Signed, Dr. Bianito A. Dagatan, CESO 5, Schools Division Superintendent. Congratulations, Dr. Peregrita J. Datan. Let's give her a round of applause, our Thank virtual so applause. Congratulations, <laughs> on Furness. Congratulations to Kiss all. Kiss everyone. Yes. Okay. So with that, with that, thank you. And with that, congratulations to Mom Furness. And that ends our session six. Whew. And that is like a ride in a what a roller coaster ride from session one to session six and I know that you had an experience that really would an experience listening to us and learning with us that will that you will be able to carry on through as we go along with our tasks our profession our vocation as a teacher so now we are ready to Start up with our closing program. So good afternoon once again, everyone, all of our beloved English teachers of the junior high school department of the schools in the congressional District 1. This is once again the English proficiency program for teachers and school leaders entitled Teaching Grammar Communicatively in the Philippines or TGCIP. May I ask the everyone to please be in attention as we start this closing program with a nationalistic hymn and remain in attention as we have our prayer afterwards.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, once again, good afternoon to all of you. This is English Proficiency Program for Teachers and School Leaders entitled a webinar entitled Teaching Grammar Communicatively in the Philippines, which we have had from September 8th to 10th, 2021. My dear regards to our school's division superintendent of the Division of Bohol, Dr. Bianito Edagatan, and also to our assistant superintendents, Dr. Danilo Godilisao and Dr. Paustino M. Toraggio. We also would like to acknowledge our EPS, or Education Program Supervisor in English in the Division of Bohol, Mr. Pablito de Villalon. And to all of uh, to our moderators, Ma'am Marilu and Sir Ronilo, and to all of our dear speakers, and to all of you, our dear participants, welcome to this closing program that we are having after the six sessions or the three-day webinar that we've had. Learning failed as it is, we need to close it. So in order for us to, in order for you to really be applying what you learned, we are going to be giving you a challenge, a challenge that you will be using the lessons that you gained from this webinar in your classroom undertakings and in your life and profession as a teacher for us to really give that and to, for us to really know more about our challenge to all of you let me all let me welcome the principal one of ambassador Pablo R Suarez National High School Carmen 3 district Ma Marilu L Arbasto let's give her a round of applause okay thank you sir Giselo okay good afternoon once again my task this afternoon is to give you a challenge Okay, so language teaching and learning, as we know, uh, underwent a dramatic change due to unpredictable situation brought about the COVID-19. We are definitely struggling a lot, and our learners too. Many of our strategies or activities that you teachers use with English learners will not be any more applied or translated in our mo modular learning uh, modality. Therefore, there are five points that I want to challenge to, to challenge you, our dear part participants. First is reflect. Reflect what activity fits for your learners, for our learners today. Evaluate our learners whether the activity you want them to do can be achieved without compromising the health and safety of our learners. Take note. Okay. Uh, the safe, safety first. I am referring to some free activities where learners will be working in a group and need to go out from their homes in order to practice. So again, remember safety first. So the next one is experiment. Try something new. Embrace change. And if you fail, try another or try it again. Try not to get stuck in a certain way of doing things. That is more important. Okay, another is expand your link. So um, ask help from your school head and co-teachers if you are planning or to do something for your students. That is, that is why uh, we are encouraged to practice integrative assessment uh, and interrogative uh, performance tasks. Um, in order not to, in order that our students will not be bombarded with many activities to perform. So apply integrative assessment or integrative test. Okay, the, the fourth one is empathy. Understand the situation of our learners. I know you, I know you have targets to hit. We two school heads have targets to achieve. Try to be considerate with our learners. Don't give too long selection, reading selections to read. Yeah. You are not there. Remember, you are not there to assist them. And some of our students don't have learning facilitators and busy parents. So uh, try to, con to consider. So if you will be giving tasks or uh, readings, um, 
make it uh, make it sure that uh, it will not be uh, too much for our learners. And um, number five, be positive, not with COVID, but your attitude towards work and towards life. In our department, there are many initiatives that drain us. So um, let take uh, let us take pain slowly. Mahuman <laughs> as, yes. as they say. Okay. So lastly, uh, I will give you this um, uh, verse from the the Bible. The Lord give the Lord gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. So we are the Lord's strongest soldiers. So the great the greatest weapon we can have today is guarding ourselves with faith and prayer. May this situation help us realize that the Lord is always always with us and never leave us. Okay, that will be all. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much for all of those that you said, Ma'am Mary Lou, which really summed up everything, which really filled us with filled us with a challenge to be better in our craft as teachers. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Once again, let's give a round of applause to our very brilliant and seasoned and supportive Principal One of Ambassador Pablo R. Suarez National High School and also our TWG and moderator in all of the sessions, Ma'am Marilu L. Arbasto. Let's give her a round of applause. And with Ma'am Marilu Arbasto, we also thank Sir Ronilo Palincot for also being very supportive. She is the IT in charge for this. And she is, he is, he, I mean, he is an IT in charge for this. And also the moderator for the whole sessions one up until session six. Thank you very much for all of your support. The speakers, the participants will, uh, will not be able to do all of these without you. Thank you very much. Okay, so now let's proceed because there is a challenge. Let's have the acceptance of the challenge as with one of the participants of this webinar. And aside from the acceptance of the challenge, he, she will also be giving an impression about this, the webinars or the sessions that we've had from session one to six. So let us not make much ado as we welcome the junior high school teacher of Kabilao National High School of Kalape District. Let's all welcome with a big round of applause, Mom Ivy C. Mundoyo. Mom Ivy, you can turn on your, your audio and video right now. Hello, sir. Am yes. I audible? Yes, you, you are, ma'am. And beautiful. <laughs> audible and beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Without any much further ado, my due respect to our ever dearest school division superintendent, Dr. Bianito Dagatan, to our APS in English, Sir Pabito Villalon, to our moderators, Sir Ronilo Palingkod and Mama Rilo Arbasto, to the amazing facilitators, namely Sir Felix and Yasko, who gave us very comprehensive discussion about the communicative approach, to Dr. Giselle Lucahis, who taught us about the three E's of grammar presentation, as well as the grammar in context, to Dr. Gemma Kalakar, who talked about the integration of grammar into a skill-based lesson and who introduced us about the tapestry approach to Sir Ray Marvin Lambus, who amazingly explained to us how to enhance our skill in correcting grammar errors and giving feedback techniques, to Dr. Peter Paul Kubai, who expertly delivered to us on how to create a communicative lesson and to Dr. Perigita Datahan, who explained thoroughly about communicating tasks and to all my fellow CD1 junior high school English teachers, good afternoon. Good when afternoon. Dr. Paul Kubai, our very active and supportive school head of Kabila National High School and also one of our speakers, asked me if I am willing to deliver my impression about this training, I was quite hesitant and even tried to decline because I feel that I am still not an expert and I believe that there are a lot of teachers who are qualified than me. But as all we know, we are teachers and 
we are we must be ready for everything and here i am now accepting the challenge kun sila pa no retreat no surrender <laughs> yes honestly speaking when we were informed that we uh, we will be having a 3 day webinar for english teachers that will fall on september 8 to 10 A negative, a negative side of me was murmuring, patay, pista na ba Jude sa loon? Ano tayo mas September 8? But the positive side of me said that, okay ra, kay lockdown man po, so why mga bisita nga, ati man nun, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. But most especially, it reminded me that I am a teacher. So as a teacher, I am always ready and on call for my duty. Then I need to sharp my skill in my field of specialization and open my doors for new and fresh knowledge and ideas. What I had instilled in my mind that this webinar is not only for me but for the best of my students. And graciously, the positive side did not fail me with the help of our very competent and knowledgeable speakers. I have learned a lot of things. It may not be all the things but surely i learned a lot during the training i was able to contemplate and evaluate myself if i am if i was really a good and efficient english teacher to my students after listening to the speakers i came to realize that i really need a lot of things like this like webinars and trainings i learned from the sharing of experiences from our speakers and as well as from my co-teachers in the field and indeed it is really true that the more you share your ideas the more things you will get and now this is it we have made it we are able to finish our 3 day webinar with smile on our faces but before we virtually part ways please allow me to share a brief or some of my impressions in this webinar. So this webinar was really well organized in terms of structure, time frames and substance. I will definitely commend the technical group behind this activity, especially for the way we handle uh, you handle the attendance of the participants. Though we are doing this virtually as if we are still doing it the way we handle face to face seminars we're in we have to do log ins and log outs uh, and we'd like also to give my appreciation to our speakers for really giving us time to ask questions queries clarifications every after the session um from the start to end the seminar went smoothly the activities were informative and useful i admit that as a teacher i also encountered problems and difficulties especially on dealing grammatical on correcting grammatical errors of our students and how to enhance their communicative and grammar competence but somehow these difficulties have had been remediated through the thorough and well thought discussions from our brilliant speakers It came to my realization that we English teachers must not only settle for what we already know, but we must always be updated and be upgraded to the new trends of teaching English, particularly on grammar. So whether we like it or not, we will always leave a mark to our students through our teaching. So as educators, we must always grab every opportunity like this. True to say, There are a lot there are a lot more to do there are a lot of problems to be addressed but what are we to do we are teachers we must be very flexible before i end my insights i would like as teachers the participants to recognize and give our part, uh, our appreciation to all the facilitators speakers technical working groups who made this webinar a successful and fruitful one please let us give them a virtual resounding applause the virtual training may come to an end but our learnings are never ending I am firm and in high spirit that we are going to carry out this learnings into application for the benefit of our students. Let us try to rem remember this 
Actually, this is a common quote that says, a good teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way of others. Good day and keep safe, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much with that, with those, all of those insights, with all of those things that you have shared to us from Ivy and the participation that you and the other participants did. Thank you very much as well. So once again, let's give a round of applause to the junior high school teacher of Kabilao National High School, Mom Ivy C. Mondoyo. A round of applause to her, please. And to all of the participants, thank you very much, ma'am. We should not, according to Mom Ivy, and I know that you also share this idea with her, there is always room for improvement, that we, we are good, we can still be better and better and better day after day. And this is one way by which we can be better in our craft again as teachers. Thank you very much, Mom Ivy Mondoyo, for your impression, insights, and accepting the challenge that we have here in the TGCP, TGCIP of CD1 Junior High School. Thank you very much, Mom Ivy. Okay, so now let me thank you very much, Mom Mary Lou, for the challenge, and Mom Ivy for accepting on behalf of all of the teachers, participants, in our webinar. So a few reminders, please be reminded of the submission of your outputs. Have it uploaded in the links which are in there, okay? So for session one, we have there, session two, three, four, five, up until six. Uh, I think there is a discrepancy in there, sorry for that. Session one should be ending with session one. That is quite wrong, sorry for that. Session two for that matter, okay? So let me, allow me to change it so that you will not get confused. This is one and this is two. Okay, wait for a bit while. And this is three. Okay, and four and five and six. And I hope that you are guided with this one. Okay, so again, please do upload your outputs in these links. Because again, this will be the basis by which we will be checking for the for for your qualification to receive your certificates of participation as well as the attendance and the evaluation. Don't forget that one. Another reminder: the deadline for the submission of output is September 20, 2021. That is a Monday after the next. Another reminder: the speaker facilitators. The speaker facilitators and EWGs and moderators will be will check the completeness of your output in all sessions. It will serve as a basis for the release of your certificates of participation. Please be mindful of that. The said certificates will be uploaded to the email address that you provided during the registration. So thank you very much once again to everyone for your participation, most especially once again to our SDS of Division of Bohol, Dr. Fabrita Villalon, I mean, Dr. Vianito Dagat, and sorry for that, I apologize. With his two assistant SDSs, Dr. Danilo Gudulisao and Dr. Faustino Tarajo, and also we thank our EPS in English of Depth Ed Division, Mr. Pablito D. Villalon, our session TWG and facilitators, Mrs. Marilu Arbasto and Mr. Ronilo Palincod. Thank you very much to both of you, ma'am and sir, for always being with us all throughout this whole journey. And also to our session speakers, thank you very much to our session one speaker, Dr. Felix Anyasco. To the session two speaker, myself, Dr. Jesse Lokahes, session three speaker, Dr. Jama Kolokar, and also our session four speaker, Sir Mar Ray Marvin Lambos, our session five speaker, Ms. Dr. Peter Paul Kubai, and our session six speaker, Dr. Peregrita J. Datahan. Thank you very much for sharing this time with our participants. Okay, so let me and let me have this quote before we go. Learning should never stop. Application of what you have learned should not either. You should we should continue learning according to IB. Continue learning according to Ma Marilu. There are a lot of ways which by which we can still learn for the sake of our learners. 
And aside from learning, we should also put those learning in application. So with that, thank you very much for being with us all throughout the three-day webinar. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your participation. Okay, and now to close this closing program, let us all welcome with a big round of applause, one of our dear speakers in this webinar of TGCIP, the master teacher, one of Lobok National High School, Dr. Gemma Kalakar, a round of applause, please. Thank you so much, Sir Jessalu. Yes, my classmate. <laughs> Okay, our school's division superintendent, Dr. Bianito Delgatan, to our two assistant school's division superintendents, Dr. Faustino Toradio and Dr. Danilo Gudelusau, to our most active education supervisor in English, Dr. Pablito Villalon, and to our two TWGs, Ma'am Marilu and Sir Ronello, and to my co-facilitators, dear participants, a pleasant afternoon. Our precious time flies like an arrow and we are getting to the closing time of our three-day virtual training on teaching grammar communicatively. Although we don't feel comfortable in our situation in this new normal, such as this, that we are having a training virtually and some have a problem their internet connection and, and we still emerge victorious and accomplished. Since our job is to help everyone, especially our learners in providing quality education in these exceptional times, we did it successfully with collaboration and teamwork as one DepEd family. So on behalf of our education supervisor, SOAR program supervisor, Dr. Pablito Villalon and the rest of the training team in CD1 Junior High School, I would like to thank all our participants for their active participation that made this webinar successful. Indeed, only together we make it happen. So I would like to end my remarks with this quote, to give real service, you must add something which cannot be bought or measured with money, and that is sincerity and integrity. Thank you and have a nice day. Wow, well said, well said. Once again, let's give a round of applause for the sincere, uh, the sincere, loving, and really brilliant master teacher, one of Lobok National High School, Dr. Jama Kalakar. A round of applause, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Jama, for that opportunity for us to hear you once again for these closing remarks. And once again, according to Jama, we thank Dr. Bianito Dagatan, Dr. Godilusao, Dr. Torajo, and also most especially to the ones who really, who really guided us through from, from, the, from the initial meeting up until now, Mr. Pablito Villalon, our apps in English. Thank you very much, sir, for this opportunity and for this, this, this avenue for the participants to learn a lot for the sake of our learners, okay? So once again, Thank you very much, everyone. We had already our photo op earlier, so I think there is no need for this one anymore. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much, everyone, for being with us all throughout the three days, okay? So any final reminder? Do we have some more final reminder, Mamari Lou, if you like to add in before we end up everything? Mamari Lou. Hey, okay, sir. No more, sir. Yes. Okay. okay thank sir. you so much, everyone. God bless us all. Okay, thank you very much. I think we've already been sharing a lot. We've already been giving a lot of ideas. And according to Mam Jama, let me repeat what she said. Allow me to repeat what she said, that we can only do this if we are together. We can, we can mold a better set of Boholano English speakers because we, can, we did it together okay the sharing of ideas was wonderful the five the six web sessions was were wonderful and i hope that you put those things also in application okay so thank you very much everyone thank you thank you thank you so now let's have our closing prayer okay scarlet in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, thank you for your amazing work for this opportunity to learn more about you. Thank you for the 
chance to acquire different knowledge from our facilitators throughout the trainings. Help us now to carry this new knowledge and experiences in our minds and put it into action. May it deeply impact our hearts, our relationships, and our lives. Grant us your divine wisdom as we go about our daily task in our place. Thank you for giving us the chance to meet new friends. May the days we spent here be more valuable and always be remembered. Thank you for making us special, for watching us, and for walking with us. And as you go home, may your guiding lights lead us and our omnipotent, your omnipotent presence be with us. This we ask and pray in your most precious name. Okay, so with that, thank you very much, everyone. That's it. We have already closed our English proficiency program for teachers and school leaders entitled Teaching Grammar Communicatively in the Philippines or TGCIP. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, bye, sir. Bye, 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 bye sir. Thank you. thank you very much. Bye. Okay, everyone. Bye, Mary Lou, sir, thank Lou, you, everyone. Sir Felix, everyone. Bye. Sir, Mary, Furness, sir Paul. <laughs> yes. Bye, 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 everyone. Bye, okay. Bye. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Bye bye. Good luck for September 13. Bye. Opening of yes, classes. Yes. Opening of classes. <laughs> this September 13. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you.